On today's episode, we're going to be talking about my top three lead sources for 2019 um, and really how to identify where a buyer sits inside the four steps of buying a house. So we're going to cover really where they are in the buying process and how to get good quality leads. So that's what we're covering today. Let's dive in and get to this. Welcome to the Bold Real Estate Podcast, where it's all about taking your real estate to a bold new level so you can dominate your market. Find us online at www.boldpodcast.com or subscribe to us on iTunes. And now, your host, the boldest guy in the real estate industry, Brett Baker. Hey, so today, like I mentioned, we're going to be talking about our top three lead sources for 2019. Uh, I think, though, to dive into the top three lead sources, what we really need to talk about first is really what I consider good leads. Um, I think that a lot of people out there would consider low-cost leads good leads, and I am not of that camp at all. Um, In fact, really the way that I look at things is I actually do not focus on cost per lead. A lot of people out there will say, well, I'm getting $2 leads, I'm getting dollar leads. That's phenomenal that you're able to generate those leads. Um, The truth is what I've found is those leads do not convert that well. And so what I tell people to focus on, instead of doing cost per lead, I tell people to focus on cost per client. And what I mean when I say cost per client, I want you to take into account all the costs that it takes to acquire that client. So to do that, obviously, yes, we do need to know how much each lead is costing you, um, but that is just a small, small portion of what we're looking at in the overall grand scheme of things. The second thing that we need to identify, so we have cost per lead, great, let's just keep that in your back pocket. We also now need to find out what your time is worth. So. I want you to find out what your hourly rate is. If you don't know how to do this, figure out how many days a week you work, how many weeks per year you work, and basically when it comes down to it, I want to know you should be able to break that out. How much money did you make over the year? You should be able to break that down and find out what your hourly cost is. So how much time are you spending converting those leads? So now we're going to take your time into it, right? We're also going to take into account all the systems that you use and that you spend money on. We need to count on those things because in reality, those are two really critical numbers. Your total overhead, and you also need to take into account how much you cost. And if you're not the one doing the conversion, uh, then you need to find out how much that person costs if that makes any sense. So cost per client is much more useful than cost per lead. Um, Like I said, I don't necessarily care what I pay per lead. I care what I pay per client. That's a number that I can improve on uh, no matter what. So let's say, for example, leads from like, I don't know, source A are about 320 bucks a lead of those 320-ish dollar leads. I convert one out of about four and they're ready to go within a month or so. So my source A cost per client is around 1500 bucks. My average commission from them is about $8,500. So I net about 7,000 per client. On the other hand, my source B leads are about two to $3 leads. I only convert about one out of a hundred. So the process takes months of hammering them. Uh, Most people that see the homes from the source B are in what I call the look at the cool home stage. Uh, They're in the dreaming stage. Most of the time, they have not entered the this can happen stage. So when I'm talking about these different stages, um, I think what we should really do is we should really break down what these stages are and then turn around and basically identify where they come from so you can figure out Uh, really what lead source is going to be best suited for you. And then we can talk about where I'm getting my leads in 2019 and where I think you should be getting your leads in 2019. So the four steps to the buying process. 
Uh, number one is the dreamer phase. So these are, these are things that I've created um, after going through several thousand leads, we're talking 30, 40,000 leads. This is what I've identified uh, in the buying process. So it's a four step system. Um, the, the first step is the dreamer phase. So what they're thinking to themselves is we want to buy a house, but we don't think it's reality. It's a dream. Maybe one day we'll be able to do it. In the meantime, I just want to see the pretty houses. Number two, we actually step into the inquisitive stage. What does our rent payment buy us? We don't want to be bombarded. We just want to see what we can quote buy unquote monthly. Maybe we saw an ad on TV that was from one of the big portals and they maybe ran something about affordable home ownership. Maybe they heard something a lender said and they thought about it. Maybe it was one of those stupid quick and loans commercials that everybody hates about rocket mortgage. Um, you can tell they are definitely not a sponsor of this show. Um, number three, the this can happen stage, right? So we've seen homes online that we like and we think we can afford. We want to see the inside. We're not sure yet if this can work, but we're willing to do the, a bit more research, right? And then, of course, the number four stage is we've spoken to a lender and we have a pre-approval. We call that the this is happening stage. So those are the four stages that I've basically identified that people will get into when they're a buyer. Um, now, I know a lot of you are probably thinking like, okay, Brett, that's great. Where, where do we get these leads from? So if you're targeting the dreamer phase, Facebook. Facebook is great for let me see the pretty pictures, right? So in the dreamer phase, they're on Facebook, they're, they're cruising along throughout the day and they see an ad that you ran that maybe wasn't really well targeted to them. It was just like a look at the pretty houses. And so they went and they clicked on that. Okay, so the inquisitive stage, that's where they actually start landing on your IDX website. Um, you're also going to see those come through on Zillow, Realtor.com, and Trulia. The this can happen stage, you get, again, you get those on the IDX website, Zillow, Realtor, Trulia, or all three of those, the big three. Finally, there's the this is happening stage, right? So you'll see more and more of the this is happening stage. At open houses, you'll see them, that's generally when they reach out to real estate agents. Uh, so more and more real estate agents will have these. So if you have those leads, you know who they are. Um, you will get a lot more showings from these. These are people that this is happening, we're ready to go out, we're ready to see homes. The other really great source for these is lenders. Now, I will get, now, I will get into my, uh, my spiel on lenders here in a bit. Um, I personally do not believe that lenders should be following up with your leads in any way, shape, or form. That's a subject for a different day, uh, but we will get there. So going back to our, our four stages, knowing where that buyer's at in their journey should change the way that you approach them, okay? So I want you to think about a funnel here for a minute, right? At the wide portion, like the mouth of the funnel, you need to inform them about the process and you need to help guide them through it. This is gonna take the absolute longest time, but you're gonna get incredibly, incredibly loyal customers out of it, right? So this is for the person that has a client care team already set up in their, in their office, uh, this is like the Jason Samard approach where you're going to capture these people right at the front of this funnel and you're going to get these insanely loyal customers out of it, right? Then at the very, very bottom of the funnel, the narrow point, you're going to get ready to buy customers, but the trust level just will not be there. So when you look at like, people ask me, they're like, Brett, where did you get your leads from? You, I mean, obviously most of you guys know I've already sold the business, I'm out of the business, but where did I get those leads? Where were they in my funnel, right? And so those leads were actually like, when you look at where am I getting my leads from, okay, the, this is happening stage, and then this can happen stage, those are coming for us from Zillow. 
I mean, there was a lot of times where we would go out and I know you're like, dude, I hate Zillow. Yeah, yeah, so do I. But I love money. So when you'd look at it, you'd go, dude, these guys would go out and see one or two homes. They'd be writing offers left and right. They're not pre-approved. Great. Send them to one of our lenders that we like to work with. And so I'm going to, I'm going to do a little side note here and you can take this nugget and we'll, we'll do a whole episode on this later on. One of the ways that I approach lenders, I do not let them spend money. I will not let them spend money with us. And here's why I want lenders working hard. I do not want them working hard to help convert leads that I've already got. I don't want them touching my leads. I don't want them calling my leads. It is my job. If they re if a, if a client reaches out to me and says, I'm really interested in going to see homes. I'm really interested in houses. That's phenomenal. They've reached out to me. I'm one half of the equation. The lender's the other half, right? So it's my job now. I have that trust built with that client. I then hand that conversation off to the lender. Otherwise, what you get is you get a lender calling at the same time you are. They're interrupting your systems and there's confusion in the process. We don't like confusion. We like telling someone, this is the lender that we recommend you go with. We really like this person. They do a really great job for our business. Now, here's where this gets even more fun. If you go to your lenders and you say, hey, look, we are going to hand all of the deals out to the lender that sends us the most transactions over the previous month. I promise you, you now will have lenders handing you deals. That's how you approach it. So again, we're going to touch on that on another episode. In fact, I'm going to try to nail one of those episodes out here soon so you guys can understand my mindset behind that. But I like lenders working for me, not nagging me about business. Um, so anyways, so let's dive back in here because um, we really should be talking about, okay, so how now, now you guys know where the buying process is, right? You know the four steps to the buying process. Um, we now have gotten to understand the buyer's mindset. Now we can actually start going on and talking about you know, where to get leads. Um, and really, you should start seeing the correlation here that low cost leads are not always cost effective when you add in the cost per client, right? So that's basically all I was trying to hammer out by that last conversation there. So in my opinion, Generating quality leads is quite literally the easiest thing to do in real estate, okay? So it literally comes down to how you target to your audience. Now, before you say, but they removed all our filters. Yeah, yep, yeah, they did. They removed almost all the filters in Facebook. And that's okay, okay? Most agents fail to take the time to figure out who their target really is and that's why they end up getting low quality leads. Other agents' ads are not going to work for your target buyer. You really need to determine your avatar. And if you're thinking about the little blue men that are in that movie avatar, wrong kind of avatar, okay? I want you to think, and, and this, is, this is straight out of uh, a Todd Tremonti move, okay? I want you to think of a real person Okay, so when I'm creating a target audience, everybody goes, well, how do you do this? Okay, so let me tell you. I think of a real person when I create an avatar. Okay, where does that person work? Okay, what interest does that person have? What income bracket is that person in? Are they a first-time home buyer? Do they have kids? You can use all of those to create your avatar, okay? So... Once you know who you're targeting, you'll have a much easier time creating an ad that is targeted to them. So I'm going to give you a real life example. Um, a lot in our area, there's a lot of first time home buyers. Um, first time home buyer ads, you're going to need a completely different audience um, than most other ads. And you being in the area that you're in, you need to think of what does a first time home buyer look like in my area? Who are they? So in my area, I'm going to use my really good buddy, Eric. Uh, Eric is 20 to, let's call him 25 to 35 years old. Uh, he'd kill me if I gave out his real age. Um, he's, his price point is realistically going to be about 200 to 250,000 because that, that mortgage is going to basically equal out what he's paying 
in rent. Now, first time home buyer, you have to think most of them are already renting. So you have to put things into words that they understand. What is their current rent getting them? Okay. So Eric is a corporate pilot. Uh, he makes about sixty to eighty thousand dollars a year. Um, since we're we're looking to target the first time home buyers that are in the local area, we're going to set our primary area and use a fifty mile radius around it. Now, what I generally run is remember first time home buyer they're renting right now. So what I'll run is an ad that is very much like a. Are you looking to buy a house in Pasco? If your rent is somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,500 a month, you can own one of these homes. Most people can even get help with a down payment. Now, if your house or if your area does a down payment assistance program, state of Washington, we have tons and tons of money for down payment assistance. So we do a lot of down payment assistance. My suggestion for you, is reach out to a lender or two. You should have a couple of lenders and say, hey, what are your, what are you looking at all in on a mortgage around 250 to you know, 275,000 or whatever your market is? Find out the average rent in your area and then find out what house they can buy for that. Now start running ads for that. So if the average rent in your area is 1500 bucks a month, okay, I want you to start running ads and, and basically link in through your IDX website. I know you guys know that I'm a huge fan of Real Geeks. I use it myself. So on the back side of things, like in a Real Geek search, I would set up a search so that when they click on these pictures, they're going to a search for houses in the 200 to $250,000 range, three bed, two bath, and I just let it ride. You're gonna get more high quality conversions out of that. So. Those are the ones you need to run. Are you looking to buy a house in Pasco? If your rent is somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,500 a month, you can own one of these homes. Most people can even get help with the down payment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually on my, on my website. If you go to uh, boldpodcast.com forward slash Facebook, um, I'm actually gonna give you my Facebook, some of the Facebook ads that I that I been known to run. I don't want you to copy them verbatim. And I don't want you to copy them verbatim because I want you to target them to your own market. Okay. So I'll give you those, but you have to promise me that you are not going to use them verbatim. So um, go onto my website, uh, boldpodcast.com forward slash Facebook. And I'll make sure you get all those ads. So, uh, like I had mentioned, dude, Facebook has made some of the some of the targeting options. They're now gone. Um, you can still run dedicated posts to your target buyer. You just have to get a bit more creative with the text, right? So notice on that last one how I said, are you looking to buy a house in Pasco? If your rent is somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,500 a month, you can own one of these homes, okay? So what I want you to think about on that is in the text that I'm already creating, I'm basically going in and I'm telling them like, hey, are you a renter? Well, since Facebook has removed that option to filter, we now are using text to quantify people. Are you a renter? Well, if a renter is going through that, they're gonna go, yeah, that's me. Oh, I can own one of these homes? If you're already a homeowner, you're not gonna pay attention to the ad because you're gonna say, I'm already a homeowner, I don't care. And so that's how that targeting works. Now, here's the cool part. This works with move up buyers, relocation buyers, and vacation home buyers. This will even work with seller leads. So I want you to start thinking in the terms of an avatar, okay? So I really, really want you to be creative with this. Um, so going back to now, because I've gone off topic twice here. <laughs> I love these podcasts. Um, so I want you to take a step back here. Where are my, where are my lead sources for 2019 and what am I a fan of? Uh, obviously, I think Facebook is going to be huge. And my reasoning for Facebook being huge, a lot of real estate agents are going to start getting very, very frustrated with the new way Facebook is doing things. I think if you start taking a very creative approach to how you do ads, 
I think you're going to find out that more and more people are going to start backing away from Facebook and it's going to give you prime opportunity to step back in and be a bit more creative. That's number one. Number two is obviously, I, and I have fought it for years, I've used it as a branding play, not a lead gen play, Google PPC. I think Google PPC is going to be uh, definitely taking off more and more. However, I think that unless you use someone really awesome to do your PPC for you, I think you're going to find out that it is not as good as Facebook is going to be because a lot of the Facebook exiles, the people that are like running from Facebook right now are going, well, what's the next best thing? They're going to start running more and more and more to Google PPC because Google PPC doesn't keep changing all of their stuff. All the, well, I mean, yes, they do. It's Google. So those are my top two. My third one um, I'm actually putting in the referral category and I'm not putting it in the, in the typical sense. Remember, I moved to my area. I didn't know anybody. I didn't have a sphere of influence. I didn't know anything about real estate in the traditional sense. I mean, yeah, my dad's been a real estate broker for longer than most normal human beings have been alive. Um, he's been doing this literally since they were using stone tablets. Dad, if you're listening to that, I'm really, really sorry. Um, He's been doing it forever. And so, I mean, I watched how he did it. Um, but in my eyes, um, I think that it's it's totally changing. Um, so anyway, sorry, sidetrack there. What I'm getting at here is referral is going to be the next best thing. Um, and so what I would tell you to do is don't think of it in the sense of referral meaning I want other people to refer to me because I hammer them with my monthly farming. I, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying when you get a customer, I want you to treat that customer the best way you can. And I want them, I mean, you can set the expectation off, off day one. Hey, I want you at the end of this transaction to be so in love with the way that I did business that you scream my name from the rooftop and tell everybody you know how awesome it was to work with me, right? So that's one way to do it. The other way that we do a lot of referral is through uh, different media sources. And w on these podcasts, I'm going to start diving into radio. I'm going to dive into TV. Um, I'm going to dive into the things that were getting me name recognition to the point where I was listed on the IMDB database. If you don't know what that is, that's basically, um, it is virtually impossible to get listed into it. I have no idea how I did. I, I do, that's not the point. Um, it basically is for actors, actresses, um, and personnel that put together TV shows and movies, and it's virtually impossible to get into, yet somehow we got listed in it. Um, what that shows is that actually brings into account celebrity. And so referral, think celebrity. Um, so we have some really creative ways to get referral. But anyways, my, my top three, Facebook, Google PPC, and then referral. I think those are going to be the top sellers as far as if you, if you can master the three of those, I think you're going to have a crazy, incredible 2019. Now, if you notice, I didn't put Zillow on that list. Now, I know all of you know how much I love Zillow. Um, I know a lot of you roll your eyes at me frequently. It's not often that you can put $1,000 into something and get $5,800 net returned back to you. Um, I didn't put it in there because Zillow is getting harder and harder to get into. And a lot of people don't have money right now to dump into Zillow. What I spend on Zillow would probably scare most human beings out of the room. And so I left it out of there because I actually don't want you to focus on Zillow. I really don't. Um, what I really want you to do is I want you to focus on building quality content on Facebook. I want you to hook up with someone that is incredibly awesome at Google PPC. If you are a real geeks user, um, Real Geeks itself does Google PPC. They are phenomenal. Um, I am actually going to give a good plug out to my buddy, Brian Short. Um, Brian is what I would consider a Google PPC guru. 
Um, what that guy can do with Google PPC is, is absolutely mind-blowing. You need to call Brian and, and get on his wait list. If he, I think he's still on a wait list, but call him and get on that because it's amazing. Um, what, you, what you should be doing, like I said, stop focusing on cost per lead. For the love of God, stop focusing on cost per lead. It, it literally will kill you. You need to start focusing on cost per client. Um, you can actually, and I don't know if I touched on this, dude, you can actually improve your cost per client. I mean, and I'm going to hammer back on this for a second. You get better scripting, coaching, role playing, you're going to improve that cost per client. If you learn how to more effectively get a, a lead from that step one, the dreamer, all the way to the step four, this is happening, your cost per lead will go down with practice you can get the lead conversion time down, thus reducing your cost per client and increasing your net. Um, you can also determine which lead sources will work better for your style of follow-up. If you're anything like me, you absolutely can't stand badgering the phones. I don't like making phone calls, bottom line. I hire people to make phone calls because I hate it. Um, that said, those lead types I can get more, uh, a better lead type that will work better with my, my style of follow-up. Um, the system that we use works really, really well for buyers that are in stages two and three, mostly four. Um, basically, all the lead sources that I currently use, Realtor, I do not use Realtor, sorry, uh, Zillow, Facebook, um, and, and a lot of the, the referral stuff that we've been using. We're really capturing in, in two, three, and four. We usually don't focus too much on the ones uh, because of the length, length of conversion. Now, a stage one, a dreamer, for example, uh, if you're not getting full information when they register on your site, those are like less than a stage one. Um, I won't even touch them, and I'm probably one of the few people in the world that will tell you to delete those. Um, I think a lot of people will go after like potential seller leads because they're like, oh, Brett, man, but they're potential. They raise their hand. Not all the time. <laughs> um, I know a couple of people that have mailed to those people. And they're like, well, why are we getting postcards from you? What? We don't want to sell our house. Well, one of you, someone registered on our site and wanted more information about the value of their house. Turns out it was someone that was either interested in buying the house, a family member that was looking at how much their inheritance is going to be. Yeah out of the will fast, right? And then my favorite, all-time favorite one, uh, it was a nosy neighbor that just saw him do a bunch of remodel and was like, oh, I want to know how much that house is worth. And so they, they Googled it. Um, and then it turned up on one of our uh, home valuation pages and lo and behold, there you go. Um, anyways, so we don't focus on stage one because by the time those convert, we've racked our costs up super high. Client care team, uh, how much time does it actually take out of our day to follow up with them? How much in system cost does it take? By that point, like if they ever convert, it we've put so much money into them, we can focus on the lower hanging fruit. Um, since I know that, I can focus less time and money on lead sources that attract dreamers. Um, that is pretty much my take on leads, lead generation, lead follow-up. Hopefully that helped you guys. Um, I am going to lead you, I'm going to leave you with one little nugget. So I'm big into data and I pulled a whole bunch of people um, over the last, I'd say three months I've been pulling people. And what I wanted to know was um, top, top producers versus regular Joes. Where are they getting their leads from? And what I have found is the regular Joes focus most of their attention on past clients, sphere of influence, and just a little bit more at 14% on Facebook. Almost no one is doing Instagram or Snapchat. Almost nobody is doing Zillow. No, almost nobody is doing like 6% doing Realtor.com, 6% doing Google PPC, and 6% uh, farming. So then we move into the top producers, right? These are uh, the top 250 agents in the United States as uh, determined by Real Trends. Uh, this is from last year. What we found on this one, uh, Zillow, 19%, Google PPC, 14%, Instagram, 10%, past clients, 18%. 
Craigslist was uh, less than 1%. Sphere of influence was less than 7%. Farming was 4%. Facebook was 17%. Snapchat came in at an astounding 10%. So what I want you to take away from that is there are the lead sources that we all know and love. A lot of things are changing. There's a lot of information out there. Um, there are a lot of shiny objects out there. What I need you to do is I need you to focus on three. The three that I want you to focus on, um, I would try again, Facebook. I would really try to do something on Google PPC. And then my final one is getting more referrals. So as we dive into more podcasts like this, I am going to talk to you more and more about uh, referrals and how to get more of them and how to use media and how to use celebrity to get yourself a bunch more leads and make the uh, conversion time a whole lot less. It's also going to make your trust factor go through the roof. And so we're going to talk about that on another podcast. But like I said, if you want my Facebook ads, boldpodcast.com forward slash Facebook. I'd be more than happy to send those to you again. You have to promise not to copy them. You have to get creative. Um, and I don't want you running crappy ads. So get creative, make stuff work in your marketplace. Until next episode, you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you for listening to The Bold Podcast. Don't forget, you can find us online at www.boldpodcast.com or subscribe to us on iTunes so you never miss an episode. Looking to kick your real estate to a new level? Want to get coached by Brett? Check out www.bookbrett.com for more information.